Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on April 7th, Good Friday 2023 here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we are going to go ahead and do, actually we got all five days in we for did. Midweek Connection, so we turn it into Midday Connection for certainly this Holy Week, this last week of Lent and right here before we go into our Easter celebration on Sunday. So today is Good Friday and uh, as such there's a good amount of reading that's related to the crucifixion of Jesus and also some of the theological implications around that. So without any further ado let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you for this time and this day, the many blessings that you have provided for us. Thank you that you have brought us through to this time when we can celebrate your death and look forward to celebrating the resurrection. Be with us in the reading of these words today uh, from, from your holy word, uh, that we would be transformed by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. Today, starting with Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, in you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others, and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb, you kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise and the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. But then praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. 
Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. From Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from he, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide, as it is said on this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. First Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 20. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the suffering destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who thought, who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you are ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. And our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 13 verse 36 and 38, and then we'll jump over to chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, 
but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And back to our Psalms, Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land, he broke every staff of bread. He had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes whose hearts he then turned to hate his people to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came and young locusts without number, they devoured all the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn of their land, the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, that they may keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. 
Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? If there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Well, that was quite a bit of reading today, Natalie. Those were uh, a lot of things going on. And since we have spent uh, Monday through Thursday talking about some of these things that we've read, and even knowing that yesterday we had a good amount of reading and not a whole lot to say about it, but somehow we still went a little bit long in our midweek connection, I wonder if um, maybe we should just let these words today be the words today. And... Uh, maybe just reflect upon the fact that from the very beginning of the Bible to the very end, all of these stories are pointing to Jesus and what he does. How, again, from the very beginning, God wanted the people to worship him in, in, in fullness and in sincerity and in truth. We know that even the disciples of Jesus, Peter especially, does then even betray Jesus and how that that uh, can be so uh, so common to the human condition we right. can all we can all claim to love God we can all claim to follow after him and then when things get difficult we do have a tendency to betray but even how it says in the Psalm 130 it's the it's the Lord that redeems Israel right. and we know that even those people who might even secretly follow after Jesus uh, Joseph and and Nicodemus how they were uh, even afraid to publicly follow but gave this great act of, of love uh, for the body of Jesus after it came down from the cross. Um, maybe not knowing fully about what was going to happen, but how I think as humans we're just caught in this weird tension right. between wanting to follow but still having doubts, you know, being confident yet still having fear. And I think especially on Good Friday, I think that just becomes evident for us as we remember this, this beautiful story. Um, I think as we were reading this today and as I was thinking because this is the first time that I've read through these as a, as a whole as well that's actually exactly what I was thinking you know here we are in Genesis and we go all the way through the New Testament and we have these Psalms and you have the whole of Scripture just like you said from the very beginning that was always the plan you know even in the the Peter passage, you know, from the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we take stories in the Bible and we take them and we learn, are we, you know, you know, the story of Isaac and Abraham and, and it's the story and it's this God provides, but that fits into the context of the entire narrative. And I know you have said before, you know, you use scripture to interpret scripture. I think as we read through scriptures and read our Bibles, recognizing that they're not just a collection of stories that it is this one continual story um and throughout that entire story everything points to christ and points to that relationship that we are invited into the people of the old testament were invited in the people of the new testament we it we are all invited into this wonderful story that we find um, in, in the whole of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's important to remember um, all of those things in context. Yeah. That First Peter passage, uh, I don't know how many of you regularly read through First Peter and things, but just that idea, uh, like obedient children, verse 14, like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance, Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Um, But how that is not even possible for us, absent the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, uh, that was ordained from the beginning of the world for this to happen. 
we, we, we love and we serve a, a great God that our efforts to even explain it fall so short. Um, but here we have even the words of inspired words of scripture that continue to be challenging to us and ex explanatory to us, but even within it contain these elements of mystery and how for those of us on this side of death, uh, death still being a mystery uh, that we can't fully understand. And so even as we are going to celebrate tonight um, in, in, humble, um, in humble posture, the story of Jesus' betrayal and his death and his burial on this Good Friday, uh, remembering that Easter is Easter is already a reality. And so even in our doubts and even in our fears, we have the assurance of the resurrection and we have the opportunity through God's spirit to live lives in obedience to him. We are fortunate that we know the other side as they lived it. They, you know, they didn't know what was to come. They see this physical death and, and of course they had to doubt. We know that Easter is coming. We know that that tomb will be open in three days. Amen. So, that's... Yeah. All right. Still hard sometimes, right? Still hard sometimes. <laughs> still heavy. Still, still heavy. Right? Still despair. There was, there's still this, uh, this heaviness uh, of betrayal and of those closest and, and then just the torture and the unimaginable yeah. um, that occurred. Yeah, and as, as Peter was saying, you know, the prophets foretold, indicated in advance the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. Right. Um, and I guess you just really can't have one without the other. Right. Yeah, well, Liv living in that reality, right? Right. Well, and the reality that, that Christ lived in that, that he knew, he knew, he understood. That didn't take away the suffering. That didn't take away the pain. That right. didn't take away the torture. Didn't undo what he was experiencing. Mm. He still went through those things. Right. So, difficult. Yep. It's good for me today. All right. Well, yeah. how about I close us in prayer? Perfect. And, uh, Sounds good. Right. Heavenly Father. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this wonderful story that we have in your words to us. And that from the very beginning, all of this um, was planned. Thank you that you have a plan. Thank you that your provision is good, that you do provide for us, um, just as you provided for the people in the Bible Old Testament through New Testament. We know that you are a God who still provides and still cares and still holds us um, close to you. Just be with us as we continue through this Holy Week and that we can look to you and that we can rest assured that the cross was not the end. That was not the end of the story. It does continue and, and the grave, the tomb will be open and it will be empty. And for that, we praise you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. All right, well, I know we're gonna get this posted, but it might be a little bit late, but if you're watching it early, we will have a Good Friday service here in the sanctuary at 5.30 tonight. Be happy for you to join us, and I know we will broadcast it online, so if you miss it in person, you can watch it online, uh, either tonight or at another time. But mm -hmm. thanks, Natalie, for this week and for coming in, um, even pleasure. on a day off and, and uh, reading scripture and talking about it together. I've been grateful for this time together. So. And you gave your day off, too. <laughs> <laughs> you well, did as that's well. All right. So, Very good. Right, and, and Easter morning will be at the Lake Lodge at 6.30 and communion there and here in the sanctuary we'll be here at 10 30 with the combined service and uh, we would love for you to join us in person or online so have a wonderful day indeed and a blessed weekend take care bye-bye bye-bye